Modding is not an easy task, even if you're used to programming in Java and have quite a lot of experience. Even if you did know programming that well, you still have to do a lot more than just code it, as art and design are also necessary things when modding. Now, with that in mind, do you think that winging a mod in 4 days when you have basically no Java experience is a good idea? Because well, about a hundred hours ago I thought this was a great plan and jumped headfirst into it. So welcome, I'm Ghosty and today I'll show you a few bad decisions I've made. The first thing to consider when modding, and I'm taking this from the basics of game design, is the core of your idea. In this case, I just had a very broad plan of making the nether more chaotic. This wasn't very solid, but I meant to mostly change the entities AIs to make them brawl with each other, which may already be good enough for a first mod. Of course, I had to take my first step before that, so I followed the first tutorial and added an item. Wait a second, I fixed it and uh, what? I tried again and then it worked. This item was supposed to be a hoggling tusk and I didn't have any real use for it yet, but I planned on using that for trading with some kind of special piglin, giving you a whole different set of items to be bargained for. Unfortunately, as you'll see, we will not get to do that. After adding this item, I was ready for step 2, which was adding a block. So, as any normal thinking human being would do, I searched how to change an entity's AI and skipped more than a few steps that I should have taken. But it's fine, because I know C Sharp, which is very close to Java, and doing that would not come back to bite me in any way, shape or form. So I began changing the guest's AI to make him angry at piglings, just to get a feel of how hard it would be. I made a few changes in the code, and although at first they didn't work, shit, I eventually managed to make them attack piglings. Sure, it had taken me 2 hours just to make this one small change, but now that I knew how to do that, I was certain that I'd be able to make what I wanted in no time. Um, yeah, this may have been a mistake. Okay, what went wrong? Guests have a rather straightforward AI. Fly around, if see enemy, shoot enemy. In fact, it's simple enough that I can show you right here how it works. These parts of the code tell the guest what he should do and what to prioritize. In this example, the code is saying, fly randomly, then shoot a fireball at your target while looking at him. If you go to the next line, although it looks confusing, it can be very easily explained. In essence, it is telling the guest, players are your enemies, but they'll only be your target if they're in a 4 block vertical range. Although weird, it's rather simple, right? But right ahead was a problem. The other nether mobs have a different type of AI. For example, piglins perform a group of different tasks depending on conditions around them, such as grouping, hunting hoglins and apparently t-posing on the dead hoglin. In fact, they are so complex that they use three different pieces of code, piglin brain, piglin entity and piglin activity, and I honestly couldn't deal with the code. I just couldn't change those, I had no idea how I would do that, and kept searching for two whole days before starting to think that I may be stupid than the guest with just one fight. I then realized that I was way too inexperienced to just skip past the steps I did, and decided to go back and take it slowly this time. So let's take a look at how my second attempt went. First, I tried to add a new block using the item I had made, a tusk pile block. It would be more complex than the one I was supposed to do for this step, so I added a new ore, named Soulstone. I changed the tusk item to this one and made a new block that would be the ore. I also made the Soulstone block, which honestly looks more like soap than anything. Then, following the tutorial series I'm using, which is by the guy I recommended on my last video, I added the necessary loot tables, made the block recipes and added ore generation to the world. Eventually, I was able to deal with everything, and was until the final step for me to feel like I was ready to really engage on modding more complex things in the future. To make a single entity, there are a lot of steps you have to take before even starting. First, you need to make a model for the entity, in this case I went for a piglin-like mob. Then you have to make a texture, it took me a little while, but since I used the already existing piglin texture as a base, it wasn't that hard. After that, you have to make animations for the entity. I wanted to make something that would fit the vanilla style, so I just did some simple animations. Then, you can finally start working on adding them into the game. You need to make a mod entity thing that basically registers that it exists, an entity render, an entity model getter kind of, and the actual entity. 
This was fine, I just had to basically follow the tutorial and then I would try understanding exactly what happened right after. But what I didn't expect is that I would get the instinct game and then it would crash. So I had to search for a fix. I started early in the fourth morning and the search began. I tried to see if the problem was in the model or in its animations. Nope, so it had to be somewhere in the code. I tried spawning the entity again and it started spawning but it didn't even appear on my screen. I followed the tutorial once again, basically doing everything as a perfect copy. Didn't work. Then, reading the crash report, I found this and searched for it on the internet. A guy said that I had to get the client's path in here, which I had already done, so I have no idea what it could be. Wait a second. Funcionou. Ah. In the end, what have I achieved with this mod? Well, here's a list of all features. Blazes, guests and zombie fight piglings now fight other entities. In theory, the zombie fight piglings shouldn't always be unconditionally aggressive, but I messed that up and now they are full of hatred. There is a new war block called Soulstone, which generates in soul sand. It is quite rare and utterly useless, unless you want a soap looking block. There is also a new entity called the Piglin Scout. The idea is that he would be a piglin that walks randomly and alone, as if to find new places to build a bastion. I just didn't add any complex AI and he technically isn't even a piglin, all due to how much experience I have right now. But that was all good practice for me to learn how to make a great mod next, so if you want to see my future progress, make sure to subscribe. This mod will not be available for download because it's bad. But do you know what is available for download and is not bad? The Denizen scripts I've made, which aren't mods, but still add content into the game. Yeah, this is shameless self-promotion. Please leave a like on this video and leave a comment too, it helps a lot. That's it for me and I'll see you on the next one.